On a brisk January morning in 2014, 40 pronghorn antelope captured in New Mexico were released in southeastern Arizona. 23 of them were returned to the wild near the small communities of Sonoida and Elgin. As they ran into the distance, they had no idea they were running to the rescue. They were brought here to help save a local herd of pronghorn that was at risk of dying out. The Sonoida Elgin herd had been crashing hard, and by 2011, only a handful of animals remained. It's unclear exactly what caused the population decline, but growth and development, roads and fences, are at least partially to blame. People are responsible for altering the pronghorn's historic habitat, but as you're about to see, they're also the reason why the Sonoida Elgin herd is finally making a comeback. These rolling grasslands surrounding the communities of Sonoida and Elgin are ideal habitat for pronghorn. Wide open spaces give these sharp-eyed animals clear views to spot approaching predators and plenty of room to escape them. The pronghorn antelope is the fastest land animal in North America. In short bursts, it can exceed 60 miles an hour. Coyotes and other predators have a hard time catching these speedy critters, but they have no problem feeding on their young. It's pretty crazy how many coyotes we have down here. During their first few weeks of life, pronghorn fawns are too weak to run with the herd, so they stay hidden in tall grasses. But coyotes are pretty good at finding them. They're coming in here and they're hunting specifically for, for fawns during that time of the year. In fact, coyotes are known to kill 75% or more of all the fawns born each year. A large, robust herd of pronghorn can withstand that level of predation, but a small, aging herd is much less likely to survive. If you're at 16 animals and the loss of four fawns is gone, that's, that's catastrophic. If you're at 100 animals and you have 60 reproducing does, the loss of 40 fawns can be tolerated because you have the other 20. The numbers were not in favor of the Sonoida Elgin herd. By 2011, its population had plummeted to fewer than 20 animals. To make matters worse, the herd was not replenishing itself. There was zero fawn recruitment from 2009 to 2011. And so it was time to, to do something or risk the, the total loss of that population. It desperately needed some help, and in 2012, it got it. The Arizona Game and Fish Department partnered with the Arizona Antelope Foundation on a multi-year project to restore the dwindling herd. It would cost about $150,000. Some of that money would come from the sale of special big game tags issued by the Arizona Game and Fish Commission. Funding partners provided the rest. They include the AAF, the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, Pima County, Safari Club International, Arizona Deer Association, Mule Deer Foundation, and Cochise County Community Foundation. Additional ground support came from local landowners, ranchers, the BLM, ADOT, and hundreds of volunteers. The project started by stepping up habitat improvement projects that were already underway. That included removing mesquite and other invaders that were taking over the grasslands, building water catchments to offset the ongoing drought, and modifying fences to give pronghorn easier access to more of their historic range. Pronghorn don't like to go over fences, but they will go under them, so a lot of work was done to replace the bottom strand of barbed wire with a smooth strand raised about 18 inches off the ground. With habitat improvements moving along, it was time to do something about the abundant population of coyotes in the area. The project called for temporary and targeted predator control using hunting and trapping methods. It would only take place from April to about mid-June when pronghorn are dropping fawns. You know, we're, we're trying to give the pronghorn and the fawns just a little window during that, that critical time of their life where they can get up to an age class that they're able to, to, to move with the herd. We're just trying to buy them some time while they're 
in that stage of development that they're just basically helpless. The results were immediate. I got a single doe. All I can see is one right now. Yep, there's a fawn with her, two of them. In the initial year of predator control, 20 fawns were counted. 17 more were discovered the following year. The Sonoida Elgin herd was finally getting a foothold, but it would take something extra to give them a fighting chance at survival. It is a very big day. The 2014 translocation of pronghorn from New Mexico was that much needed shot in the arm. 23 animals were added to the Sonoida Elgin herd, giving it some much needed genetic diversity. A few weeks later, the Arizona Game and Fish Department and an army of volunteers set out to capture as many as 70 pronghorn near Prescott Valley. We were able to uh, build the wing fences and uh, get a corral and, uh, and alleyway completed. Uh, then we were able to put a, a helicopter in the air. That helicopter herded those uh, pronghorn along, uh, negotiated a series of fences, and uh, managed to get them into the, uh, the corral. At that point, um, we go ahead and let them rest there, put up some blinds so the tarps around the corral structure. That allows them to calm down, and we let them stand for about an hour. Uh, then we went in, uh, processed them, gave them a health assessment, uh, gave them a few antibiotics and, uh, and injections to kind of help them along. All of the animals get a numbered ear tag, and some are fitted with GPS collars. Uh, we then uh, loaded them into the boxes and, uh, and held them until we were ready to transport them. Students from the Future Farmers of America program at Tombstone High School were among the volunteers who helped process the animals. I helped uh, ear tag them and I helped carry them out to the trailer. I've been with the project for like since it started about two or three years ago and actually getting to finally be out here with the capturing, actually getting to see them hands on. I mean, the closest we've ever seen them was just with binoculars. So actually being in there with them and getting to see them and touch them and put the tags on their ears, it was really cool. After the animals are released, the students will be tracking those pronghorn wearing GPS collars to see how they use their home range and where man-made barriers are restricting their movement. The helicopter crew spent one more day chasing pronghorn, but it never had any more luck pushing them into the trap. So the captured animals hit the road, and the next morning they arrived in the Sonoida Plains. This capture wasn't as successful as we would have liked. We would have liked to have had a, quite a number more animals. Only five pronghorn were set to be released after one died during transport and another died at the capture. Everything we do when, we, when we're managing wildlife and doing a translocation, there are risks to the individual animals. Um, so we always try to ensure that when we're doing a release, that we're actually going to do, population-wise, we're giving a real benefit to the population where we're releasing the animals and so try to minimize the risk to the extent possible for the individual animals that we're transporting. Losing even one animal is absolutely heartbreaking for the biologists and volunteers who work so hard to protect and conserve wildlife. This is why it's so important to keep habitats intact, keep, keep uh, conditions favorable for populations, because this, it is difficult to restore populations once they get a very low numbers. Wildlife conservation is extremely difficult, but it's also incredibly rewarding. This, this population was absolutely in dire need. We're just adding a few more that we were able to catch this week to try and supplement this population, give them a few more numbers so that they can really start doing well. What started as a three-year project was extended one more year. Then, in the summer of 2015, it was over.
The only thing left to do was to get a final count. That last ground survey took place the morning of June 15th. Yeah, this is, uh, this is our fourth intensive fawn survey. And uh, ugh, I'm going to get emotional. And four years ago, we counted just 33 antelope. And today we counted 144 antelope. And of those 144, 55 are young of the year. There's likely more out there. We had an 85% bond success. Um, it's just very rewarding. It's the result of a lot of hard work and a little help from Mother Nature. This past winter, late winter and early spring, we had an unusually a high amount of moisture, probably to the tune of six and a half to seven inches right here in this area. So we've got great green up. The does weights are up, uh, the fawn weights are up, and as a result, a lot of these fawns will, will survive given their uh, conditions and their size. So everything's looking good. We'll come in here in uh, August and do our aerial survey and confirm everything. On August 15th, the survey crew took to the sky. I was the primary observer for our annual pronghorn antelope surveys. So we fly transects and we count the number of animals that we see. We, we classify them according to bucks, does, fawns, and that helps us determine what our populations are doing, if they're remaining stable, if they're growing. We saw a lot of pronghorn. We saw about 130 pronghorn. And we are just absolutely elated with the numbers we've been getting. The pronghorn are doing incredibly well. There's a, a really good fawn crop this year. We were seeing tons of fawns from the air. Um, they're doing remarkably well. The population is, is growing. The numbers weren't quite as high as before, but they were close. Out of 129 pronghorn, 46 were fawns. That's a ratio of 77 fawns for every 100 does. Remember, for three straight years before this project started, that ratio was zero. Absolutely no fawns were surviving, but now they were thriving. Which is just incredibly uh, exciting to us. You know, we're back, in, uh, we're back in pronghorn business down here. Thanks to solid science, hard work, and a steadfast determination to maintain the natural diversity of wildlife that exists on the Sonoida Range. Making sure that the pronghorn in this grassland, which they were native to, was, uh, was self-sustaining. <laughs>